voxel landscapes are potentially huge. How do you even display something like that when the space the graphics card has to offer is very limited, to say the least? Maybe they are uh, bigger on the inside. Since I have poor impulse control when I set my ambition, I always aim big. But how does this all work? I mean, there's only limited space within the GPU and... Voxel data. I was wrestling with this problem a lot, same as you. And then I was starstruck. One trillion voxels within a megabyte? What the fuck? Since then, B parted ways with Voxels, but his legacy remains. In this video, I will analyze his caching method, take it a little bit further, and also propose an even better alternative. Spoiler alert, the method I would recommend is not the one he proposed, but it all started from there, so I want to pay my respects and take it apart. Haha. <laughs> the first time I executed this I was like magic. Because I always looked at the GPU like it's this thick, impenetrable black box of void. Yet, here I was, executing a visibility-based streaming algorithm. I felt like a king. So the thing that the GPUs use to store data is called Video Random Access Memory, or VRAM. That's generally not available to the CPU, or not available seamlessly to the CPU. VRAM is set to be close to where the actual graphical processing happens, both virtually and physically. It also has its own cache line, and it's optimized on the hardware level for visual processing. In contrast, good old regular RAM has no such specialization, but it's more or less seamlessly available in any computer program. The problem I'm describing looks to be quite simple. There is limited space inside the GPU and it is costly to put data there. And it's not simple either. Additionally, in video games, but basically in every graphical art, the target is to be as immersive as possible. So you're aiming to keep your players in the zone, you must find a way to stuff all this behind the scenes so it's invisible, undetected. It's worth noting that Voxel Hacks, my own open source Voxel ray tracing library, is working with voxels directly instead of meshes. If you want to update voxels real time inside the GPU, you need to know what data is needed inside it, what data can be discarded, and what connections or these update operations are modifying. So the first two points by themselves are quite a challenge. The guy I mentioned before had a solution for them, built into the ray tracing algorithm, no less. I'm calling it visibility-based chunk selection. In a nutshell, while the ray tracing algorithm cooks, when it encounters missing data, it requests it. It does that by updating buffers on the GPU, which is grabbed periodically by the CPU side of the library. To make this possible, there has to be a clear indication of data that should be available but isn't. Occupied bits, for example, serve this purpose pretty well. I made a video about them. Look. So all is good until the buffers on the GPU are filled completely, every request can be served without problems. However, since the buffer sizes are limited and the data we want to display exceeds it, there has to be a deallocation strategy. Or in other words, what data to overwrite for the latest data requests. A strategy for this is the least recently used cache algorithm, which defines, surprise, the least recently accessed data to be the safest for deletion. According to Beast technology, whenever a voxel is accessed by the ray marching algorithm, it's also moved to the front of the buffer. Because of this, voxels recently accessed were always at the front, so new data can always be written safely to the back. Here are my two cents though. I don't think reordering the voxels upon displaying them is a good idea. I think we can do better. This structure does suggest implicitly the last access time of each individual voxel, but that's not entirely useful for the purpose. 
It's also putting stress on the GPU to rearrange voxels, all the while messing up cache lines. But on the flip side, you have to prioritize what to phase out somehow, otherwise you might accidentally overwrite something right in front of the player, or have strange flickering effects which has severe consequences if you're going for immersion. A simple upgrade to this is to not reorder data all the time, or do not reorder it at all. Sit your ass down. To have a stable display in front of the player, all you need to select is what needs to be kept and what doesn't. Enter the second chance algorithm. But before that, this is not the first media I pushed out on the topic. Here's a very quick summary. In Voxel Hacks, which is my open source ray tracing engine, voxel data is stored inside a tree graph, which has voxel matrices inside its leaf nodes. That was a bit dense, wasn't it? If this didn't make any sense for you, then my previous videos will provide you with some understanding. I dedicated multiple tens of minutes describing how data is stored in voxel hacks, so if you haven't checked them out yet, I would recommend it as these serve as the basis of what I'm about to explain. While B had individual voxers stored inside the GPU, in voxel hacks there are bricks in the buffers instead. Additionally, in this version, another buffer is allocated for usage data. That's essentially a single bit for each brick and for each node, so it's quite effective because it can be squished together compactly for better performance. Already available data is marked as used while ray marching. This usage info is then grabbed by the CPU part. This info is used to determine what needs to stay and what can be discarded or overwritten. A search for unused data is started from somewhere inside the buffer with the help of what I call the victim pointer. If the current element, which is pointed to the victim pointer, is marked as used, then this information is being set to not used, and the victim pointer is moving forward. The Reaper is moved forward until it finds data which was originally unused, marking usage data unused in its path. The originally unused data can then be safely overwritten as it is assumed to be out of sight. When rendering is executed again, usage information is updated again, so whatever is still relevant or visible will have its used bit set back to true. This everlasting dance of the Ray and the Reaper is the most effective way I found to make this stack work. As I implemented this, there are separate victim pointers for bricks and nodes, by the way. The reason for this is, is that nodes are just more complex than bricks, mainly because the connection information is contained within node information. So if you erase a node, you also need to erase the connection to its parent node, otherwise the data will be corrupted. By corrupted, I mean when a node is discarded, you have to know who, specifically which parent, you are taking that node away from and update its connections. Without this step, a newly updated node or brick would be accessible from both the previous parent and its new parent as well, except the previous parent would point to an incorrect node or brick. By the way, this also leads to the basis of the instancing logic I want to implement, so stay tuned if you want to find out where that goes. To quickly reiterate what we have learned so far, data should be uploaded in well-defined segments, nodes and bricks do just fine for packaging. It should be uploaded continuously, and whenever the GPU VRAM is full, least recently used data should be overwritten. And when that happens, make sure to also modify data for the relevant connections as well. There are many things this algorithm does automatically, including data prioritization when the buffer is full, data selection for upload, parent lookup when the data is uploaded, because it's basically implied from the data request, surface voxel or brick restriction, defining buffer sizes, which is kinda only half true because you still have to think about how big of a buffer you want to allocate inside the GPU, because it uses whatever is available, and it is really great at handling inconvenient viewport dimensions. It will populate the GPU with data the player is actually looking at, independent of the shape. It's really fluid. Not all landscapes are in the shape of a spherical cow, after all. 
And although this method is pretty neat, I think it delegates responsibilities incorrectly. Rendering shouldn't be losing frame time for data selection because rendering and data selection is kind of a different responsibility. And uploading data should be a continuous effort, meaning you don't want to upload everything all at once, but in small parts. And this is something you cannot really do with this algorithm because part of the logic is baked within the rendering loop, specifically the ray marching algorithm. There are ways to minimize this impact by separating this into its own pipeline step. This means that data requests can be executed only a few times per second, and they can also be executed on a lower resolution. But still, the race conditions generated by the data requests and the overhead for updating usage information, quite significant. Most problems the visibility-based approach solves can be resolved with a little bit of elbow grease. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I believe this could be the solution for a range of problems that I still haven't encountered yet. Better yet, I believe in you, because if you can find a way, dear viewer, developer, enthusiast, tinkerer, to improve this, it might be the missing link that surpasses any other methods in this area. I am merely hoping to help you achieve that. That is why I did a video about this, because I'm not using this technology anymore. The main reason I am changing methods within the streaming logic is that I couldn't find a single practical advantage of it over proximity-based chunk selection which is the topic of my next video. So if you are into this kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe to get notified when I arise from my digital slumber and upload a new video again. <laughs> this topic is so big that I couldn't even fit my usual oversharing routine this time. What a shame. <sighs> or is it?